I have been dying to try out this bike for the past couple of months, ever since I knew it was arriving in Philippine shores. And today, we finally get our hands on the most adorable thing I've seen on two wheels, the CF Moto Papio X01. And it's happening in this episode of Behind... No, this is Beyond the Right. So here it is in the metal and well, a little bit of plastic. And tell me, that's really just an adorable looking motorcycle. You got the LED headlights up front, the dual headlights, kind of reminds me of the Desert X. You have this hidden indicator right here, which kind of reminds me of the MTS. <laughs> um, I mean, if this thing was like a full size motorcycle, it would be just absolutely stunning already. And in, in, this, in the package that it comes in, you know, a little mini bike, it's just, Cute, adorable, not like Kako. You get a half fairing with the bike, which is really not so common with bikes this size, which really are the Grom and then Kawasaki has one as well. I think this is the Kawasaki Z125. And over in the back, you have the exhaust mounted in the middle and these little two round uh, tail lights as well. I mean, it's just such a sweet looking little pocket rocket that I absolutely love. And if you're here in the cockpit area, like the, the handlebars, for some reason, it kind of reminds me of a PlayStation controller. Not too sure why. Maybe the X's, the O's, or <laughs> something along those lines. But it kind of just gives me that vibe to it. It's just, you know, a little video game. And of course, to complete the cafe racer look or theme of the little bike, you have the bar and mirrors, which I quite uh, enjoy with this little machine. And it's actually one of those things that, you know, if you drop the bike, you know that the mirrors will probably be safe because it's just gonna bend this way or that way. The bike is powered by a 125cc liquid-cooled fuel-injected single-cylinder engine that makes 9.5 horsepower. Stopping power is provided by disc brakes with ABS. It's got inverted forks up front and a preload adjustable monoshock for the rear. And the wheels are 12 inches. The seat height is 770 millimeters. Um, and well, this is not gonna be an issue for me. Kako might have a little bit of a hard time flat footing this, but that's what it looks like for somebody with, who's five foot six with a 764 millimeter inseam. So this is probably what it feels like for professional basketball players when they ride sport bikes. So it's pretty basic, it's simple. Um, the, the dash gives you all the necessary information and it's a little, you know, it has a nice little digital display here on the bottom right side of the dash and then the rest is analog. Um, it does have a fuel gauge, unlike some of the other bikes out there. Uh, this one is uh, fairly complete when it comes to a lot of the instrument uh, stuff that you have or the, the information that you have here on the dash. It also has a little bit of an indicator on when to shift which I don't really see on other bikes. The fuel tank capacity is five liters, and because it is a 125cc, I mean, expect it to give you about 30 to 35 kilometers per liter, which is, well, pretty standard for a bike with this displacement. Now, the weight of the bike is 231 pounds, and it's, it's actually a lot heavier than I thought it would be, but it looks like it's gonna be a lot, a lot lighter than that, but, you know, 231 pounds, it's still pretty easy, I mean, Seriously, look at the, the way that I'm, I'm seated on the bike. The weight is insignificant, it really is. I mean, it, you can just move it around easily. We have it inside the office for, for goodness sake, right? So it's easy to move around in the parking lot, it's easy to move around uh, wherever you are. It's just, just an easy, no frills, adorable thing on two wheels. So I've had this bike for a couple of weeks now and wherever I went with the bike, people stopped me and asked me about it. I mean, because it's just, it just attracts so much attention, despite of its stature of being a little uh, two-wheel machine. But it just, just draws so much attention. And you can't blame them, right? Because it is quite a, a looker. Um, my, my concern is, though, is that when I'm beside SUVs or vans or trucks or basically bigger, higher vehicles, especially at this position, because you are kind of bent forward a little bit more. You know, scooters, you're, you're typically up here. So you, you're, you're seated a little bit taller. This one, you're kind of further down. 
So I, I just wonder how visible I am uh, to the other motorists with bigger vehicles. Um, I guess we can do a quick sound test inside, right? You guys, do you guys object? No, it's fine. Uh, but what, what I would do though, I mean, I, I like the, where the, the, the pipe is situated, but I probably would put a louder one uh, just in case because it is kind of small, it is kind of low, so you'd want to um, have a little bit more, you know, I guess, sound so that people know you're around. Not that I subscribe to the loud pipes uh, save lives whole uh, mantra, but for this bike, because it's so tiny, it might work. So anyway, let's do a quick sound test. Sounds like a 125. Oh, it even has the hazard lights. You don't normally see that uh, with bikes in the 125 range. All right, so the seating position is actually a little more aggressive than I thought it would be and the foot pegs are slightly rear set and you do have to uh, lean forward just a little bit in a little bit of a you know, slight attack mode, uh, which I suppose goes well with the whole look and aesthetics of the bike. Now, I wonder if Orion can put an exhaust on this thing. Uh, for, for, you know, for, for something this small, I would want a pipe, as I mentioned a while ago, uh, that's a little bit louder for safety purposes. Um, again, I don't typically follow the logic of loud, uh, li loud pipes save lives, uh, but on this bike, I think it probably would, would be true. When I'm sitting in the saddle, I feel like uh, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's just like a fun little machine. And again, it, it has a video game type of vibe. There's no technology, there's no TFT screen or anything like that. But, you know, these X's that you see here on the, on the clip-ons, it just reminds me of a, again, a PlayStation controller. You know, it's a fun, simple little bike and it's absolutely adorable. It kind of, you know, reminds me of if you're walking a little puppy around. Uh, because, you know, if you're walking a little cute puppy around, somebody's gonna stop you and ask you about the puppy, puppy and then say hi to it and whatnot. It's kind of similar to what this bike does, you know? It's like having a cute little puppy. It's really, really easy to filter, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, I just wonder if I'm visible enough to the people I'm passing uh, in bigger and taller vehicles. Uh, so when riding this, you know, just make sure you are aware and you are a defensive rider. Ride as if you are invisible and assume people don't see you. Uh, just for safety measures, because it's really small and low. Um, you know, it's, it's slightly lower than scooters. We're going to do a test in a bit uh, where we're going to put Earl in, in an SUV just to see uh, what, what, what it looks like from inside the car. You know, with the, with the traffic as bad as it has been uh, in the past couple of weeks or maybe even months, uh, this little thing has been a lifesaver for me. As I said, I've had this bike for a couple of weeks and I've beat Manila traffic because of it. I've gone to, you know, places around the city, uh, to meetings, to appointments, and this thing has gotten me there on time with time to spare because I'm not trapped in a gridlock. You know, if I were to take a, a even my bike, my, my big adventure bike, I'd be stuck in traffic. But this, I'm literally zipping past every single vehicle on the road. For a 125, it actually is pretty quick. You know, I've used other 125, like scooters and, and whatnot, and they don't seem to be as zippy as this bike. So I, the performance-wise, I know it's kind of funny, but it's actually a fairly quick bike. You know, it, it can get up there, it, you know, it can pick up speed relatively quick and relatively fast, that it, it actually is a safety measure as well, because you gotta, you know, it's better to be ahead of the traffic, it's better to be ahead of the, um, the, the vehicles than behind it in case something happens. So you know, it's nice to be, you know, get past the traffic as fast as possible. I've had, you know, my top speed on the bike, uh, open throttle and all, was about 90, 90 95 kilometers. 
Um, it, I didn't, I didn't really push it to be honest with you, just because it's so small. I do feel the bumps in the road, and I didn't want to accidentally hit something and just lose control of the bike. But you know, it can get up to a, can get up to a close to 90, 95, and that's not so bad at all. I mean, you're just using it around the city. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. And when I was going that speed, it was actually very stable. I mean, even though the tires are really small, um, it still felt very planted. It didn't feel, I didn't feel any tank slaps or anything like that. So it still was very, you know, confident, inspiring in that sense. I didn't feel like um, I was going too fast for the bike. You know what I mean? It's, it's just something that it was still manageable. It was still very controllable. And I didn't have, I didn't, it didn't, it wasn't alarming to go at that at, at that uh, speed on this bike. So I am about 145 pounds. Again, five foot six, 764 millimeter inseam, and you know, um, I feel like I'm kind of big on this bike. But Jack did ride this, and he actually managed to ride it without any real issues. Sure, he looked a little funny because he's significantly bigger than I am, uh, but it still managed. It still could carry the weight. It still could carry the size of Jack. And without any issues whatsoever, we, he still managed to uh, go from point A to point B and still have a lot of fun. I asked him about it and he said that it's, when you look at it, it looks so adorable and cute that it does look silly when somebody big is on the bike. However, it's just fun. You know, it's a fun little pocket rocket that looks absolutely adorable. Just, again, like a puppy. Maybe that's why it's called Papio. Puppy, Papio, Papi. Yeah. Anyway, it sounds kind of like similar. So, um, yeah, I, I don't want to give this bike back. I honestly don't. Like, I, I, it, it works well, right? If you have a big adventure bike, you need something for the city, and you don't really want to use a scooter, this is perfect. This is it. Right? What else can you use for the city um, that's going to get you through traffic with ease? And if you don't use it, like, I, I think this is it. This is something that I want. Um, so I'm sorry, CF Moto Philippines. I'm not giving this bike back. So I was thinking to myself, if this was a car, what would it be? Would it be a Mini Cooper? Maybe, but a Mini Cooper is still a little bit more practical than this, right? This, this, like, let's be honest, this is not the most practical thing in the world. A scooter would be more practical. But if this would be a car, I think it would probably be like, you know, like the 80s or 90s Miata. Uh, that's probably a good, uh, a good something to comparable with, with this bike. Um, the, the, you, know, the, you know, the ones with the pop-up lights, that, that, that Miata. I think that's something that um, kind of reminds me of you know, what, what this bike is, if it were to be a car. All right, let's head back to the office and wrap up the video. So if it's not obvious yet, I absolutely love it. I really do. I think I've said it multiple times already in this video. It's adorable. It is cute. I want one. It's a great bike. Uh, if you are learning, if you're learning how to ride a, ma a manual transmission, this is perfect for it um, because, well, it's so low to the ground and it's confidence inspiring for beginners. It's a great bike if you, uh, for track use, for a pit bike. So if you're going to go around the paddock um, and you don't want to take your sport bike around, this is perfect. You, you know, go around the track with the bike, it's, it can handle that too. So it's also a bike that is, instead of having a scooter for the city, perfect. This bike is really just something that I think checks so many boxes. Does it make absolute sense? The truth is maybe not. But when you look at it, it doesn't need to make sense. It is so adorable, so cute, so good looking. I want one. And for a price tag of 128,000 Philippine pesos, I think it's an absolute phenomenal deal. For more information about this bike and other entries out there, log on to www.motodeal.com.ph. This has been Gene Rafino. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bye. Bye.